It is common nowadays for us to consider new developments for our first home. New paint, new finishes, new environment. But after moving in, you may have to put up with months of neighbors renovating their homes, drilling, hacking, and canvas protection throughout the corridors. Well, if majority of first home owners considers new properties, what happens to the old? My name is Alex Lee and I am from Design Seas. In most of our previous episodes, we have been featuring amazing projects which entices the society, encourage and educate the story behind every single project that has been featured. However, most of the projects concludes in a high value budget. Today's episode, we will be featuring an interesting passion project that shares some tips on how to make your home look luxurious on a budget. If you're not subscribed to us yet, do it now and stay tuned to more educating and compelling videos which we have passionately lined up for you. Minka in Japanese means house of the people. In Japan, Minka were the dwellings of farmers, artisans, and merchants. Down to earth, humble, yet practical. Minka House was inspired by the surroundings, a single story townhouse that sits on the upper level of the sharing unit. When I first visited the site, I was enticed by the location of the unit, cocooned around the greeneries, and that was what inspired me. Part of the client's brief was to relate nature into the interior. What was initially a 900 square feet townhouse was extended to be a 1,400 square feet, three bedroom, two bathrooms, humble abode. Stay till the end of this episode and we will be revealing the cost of this modest transformation. The orientation at the rear part of the property was entirely restructured. We turned the third bedroom into a master suite, moved the kitchen to the back, and enlarged the bathroom to be more accommodating. What was initially the backyard has now been transformed into a focal masterpiece. When you have limited room to play with, creating spaces is the essential of space planning. What we did here was to create an extension to the master bedroom, which has a unique study table that overlooks an interior planter box. When the owner wakes up in the morning, the master suite turns into a studio unit, which allows the study table to be turned into a breakfast counter. The owners make use of the counter area in the morning to enjoy the cereal and cup of coffee before kickstarting the day. If a large party of guests comes over, the space turns into an extension for the kitchen area for preparation and source. Due to the bathroom being in the center of the space, we kept large window openings to allow for the space to have sufficient natural lighting. A practical and pleasant looking makeover that transformed from a backyard into this fully equipped kitchen that has a large single bowl sink, ample worktop space that could even fit a coffee machine, a space for laundry and sufficient storage cabinets. The existing master bedroom was kept the way it is. However, we relocated the basin out from the bathroom to create a quirky highlight that brings a refreshing makeover, giving a new identity to the existing bedroom. We moved the dining area to the front of the home, extending the previous outdoor patio, creating a panoramic glass opening that gives a picturesque sight of the surrounding greeneries. The purpose of doing so was to allow for an open access to the balcony to cater for large family and friends gathering on the rooftop balcony. The large sliding doors were designed complemented by the aluminium and glass pane windows at the rear to cultivate fluent cross ventilation. The window opening at the rear was designed to have a single side opening which acts as a fin from the exterior architecture that allows fresh air to be funneled into the unit from the rear of the property making the kitchen and bedroom area airy and refreshing at all times.
I'm sure you're curious to know by now how much this renovation would cost and how to turn your home luxurious on a budget. Everything you see in this video, including all the furniture, appliances, construction, carpentry fittings, all came up to the final amount of 200,000 ringgit. To be honest, as much as we want to assist all our viewers to achieve their dream home within their budget, but there is only that much we can do. So we hope by sharing the following tips, it could educate and assist you in designing your own home. Tip number one, laminated floorboards. An affordable solution as the application allows you to overlay the floorboards above the existing floor finish. Regardless if the existing floor is cement or tiles, as long as it is level, the laminated flooring could just simply sit over them. It gives your home a cozy and comfortable atmosphere and improves the acoustic within the space too. Tip number two, lightings. Instead of adding additional wire points to allow for multiple downlights or spotlights, an affordable solution will be to use track lights. Easy maintenance, and if more lights are needed, additional fittings could easily be added. Tip number three, aluminium and glass. Invest slightly more in tasteful colors and profiles. The final outcome goes a long way. Selective elements in your space should be used as highlights to your overall interior and these details add a lot more value and impact to the overall design. Tip number four, choosing the right furnitures. I know we're talking about keeping your budget low, but in terms of loose furnitures, the common mistakes made by owners are to purchase cheap and less durable knockoff deals. In our professional opinion, loose furnitures depicts the quality and comfort of your daily lifestyle. A quality sofa could last you for years but a cheap knockoff would probably last a year or two and the comfort that you need to compromise with within that two years is the horrifying part. Tasteful quality furnitures are investments that add value to your home. After all, you may not be able to move a lot of things from your old property to the new, but you are able to move your loose furnitures to your future home. Tip number five, indoor plants. The most significant feature to this home, which I enjoy most, the invitation of having nature amalgamated into the interior spaces adds a luxurious feeling to this humble abode. As a special feature to this episode, we are pleased to have Penny Chu, co-founder of Lumdis, to share the know-hows and how simple it is to be parents of indoor plants in your dream home. Hi, my name is Penny and I'm the co-founder of Lumdis. The culture of adopting plants is increasing, um, especially during the recent years. And the very common questions that are being asked is uh, revolving around what type of plants is suitable for my house? What is the difficulty levels in terms of maintaining them? And thirdly, are they pet friendly or kid friendly? Let me share a few pointers if you are a first time plant parent. You can choose plants that are sturdy long-lasting and does not require much of a maintenance. For example, the snake plant, it requires very low maintenance in terms of watering them. You can water them as infrequent as one to two weeks, depending on which position you put them in your house. What you should also be looking into is whether your house has any children or any pets. Most plants are generally safe for humans and pets. However, do take note of a certain plants, for example, the money plant and also the peace lily. They are fine to be displayed at home. However, just make sure that your pets and children don't chew on them. As a beginner, I would recommend these few plants to start with. You can start with the snake plant. You can start with some uh, aloe vera as well, or things like the dragon trees or ficus and phytonias. These are perfect uh, as a plant beginner. Plants are not just important for the aesthetic of the space, but it also helps us to boost our mood and also our energy when we are in that particular space. So in this project, we have placed uh, plants that require frequent watering in the bathroom, whereas for plants that require lesser watering at the general space. Phytonia generally loves water, so um, putting them next to your basin is the perfect spot. Next to Phytonia is a money plant, which is also known as Potos. Potos is generally loved by everyone. They are very easy to grow. 
However, as we mentioned earlier, some plants might not be suitable for kids and pets. Kotos is actually one of them. This cute little plant over here is known as thyme. It emits really nice fragrance that really help you to lift up your mood. Thyme loves bright sunlight. The way to show your tender loving care to thyme is to let it have a sun bath every day. If you would like to make a statement at your space, I would really recommend the usage of ficus, draco, sweet prayer plant, as well as the bird of paradise. These few plants really have the ability to grow very lusciously given the right care and maintenance. Some plants may even have the air purifying property that really help to freshen up the surrounding. In this project particularly, we are using the birds of paradise which is next to the bedroom. Moving on to sweet prayer plant, they are great for outdoors because they love direct and bright sunlight. Ficus is one of the millennials' favourite because it's considered as a low-maintenance plant. You don't really have to water them that frequent and they shed very little leaves compared to other trees. This spiky-looking plant is known as Draco. It is hard and sturdy and it is drought-tolerant. Putting them under the shade like this place is perfect because they like indirect sunlight and they only need very little water. Plants are just like humans. They have different characteristics, they have different behaviour under a very different circumstance. By knowing the characteristics and behaviour of each plant, being a plant parent is not that difficult after all. If you're interested to find out more about the plants, please check out the link below for more information. Mature Township, Friendly Neighbours, Fully developed neighbourhood and strategic location of old houses versus new township at the suburbs away from the city hustle and bustle. Share your comments on the comment column below and let us know which is your preference. My name is Alex Lee and I am from Design Seeds. We hope this episode could assist you in realising your dream home. Do support us by subscribing to us and stay tuned to more tips and educational content in improving your dream home. We are also on TikTok, Facebook and Instagram. Check us out to learn more about interior design and architecture. I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.